Mafia boss Rocco Morabito had a good run, and I do mean run, an adult life at the top of his game, followed by 25 years as an international fugitive. Most of that living large and in charge, unbothered by his status as one of the world's most wanted men. His life in comfortable subtropical estates in South America, where he represented the most powerful Italian mafia organization, was eventually interrupted by an arrest, which in turn required a daring escape to resume his life on the lam. But now his run finally seems over, and police around the world are mighty pleased about it. The mob reporter here with news this week of the triumphant extradition of a big boss of the Andrangheta, that's the Mafia of Italy's southern region of Calabria, who was hauled in chains back to Italy from where he fled decades before. It's quite a trip, filled with exotic travel, daring escapes, false identities, power corruption and lies. Let me tell you about it. There are many nicknames and labels attached to Rocco Morabito, and most of them come with superlatives. He's not just a mobster, but a powerful mob boss. Not just a narco, but the king of cocaine. He wasn't even just a fugitive. Morabito was, in the police hierarchy of the global underworld, a super fugitive. To keep things current, let's start at the end. Morabito's decades on the run came to an end on July 6, 2022, when a heavy police guard escorted him through the busy streets of Brazil to an airport, where a plane from Italy was waiting. 25 years on the run is quite an achievement. Morabito, now 56, sat at the top of an Andrangheta clan that bears his family name, one rooted in Africo, in Italy's southern region of Calabria, on the Ionian coast. The modern evolution of the Andrangheta as it morphed into a global underworld powerhouse is reflected through his life. He was at the forefront of expanding the Calabria Mafia from its rural roots in the south to the financial centers of Italy's prosperous north. In the 1990s, he was there as one architect of the Andrangheta's internationalization, reaching across the Atlantic to South American brokers who controlled the distribution of gangland's most important commodity. He struck lucrative deals in South America, both with Colombian cartels and with Brazil's most powerful crime gang, known as PCC, which stands for the Portuguese equivalent of the First Command of the Capital. He brought cocaine to Europe by the ton, and police declared him a top international broker. He was supposed to be arrested back in 1994 in a large police operation targeting the importation of coke from South America. And although he was sentenced to 30 years in prison in Italy, authorities never got him behind those bars. He disappeared into the wind. A distinctly subtropical wind close to his second home in South America. He eventually settled in Uruguay with his family, where they lived in comfort in the seaside resort of Punta del Este. It's nicknamed Beverly Hills. He was living under a false name, using forged documents saying he was Brazilian born. While on the run, he was the subject of an Interpol Red Notice, but continued coordinating transatlantic operations for the Andrangheta, authorities say. He slipped up in 2017 when he apparently registered his daughter into school using his real name. A joint probe by U.S., Italian and Uruguayan officials traced him to a hotel in Montevideo, Uruguay's capital. He was arrested and jailed while he fought extradition. Morabito escaped 1,142 days after his capture. It was a nice bit of daring do. The only known witness to the escape was a senior citizen who lived next door to the prison. She awoke in the night to find three men standing in the dining room of her apartment. Morabito, who seemed to be in charge, asked her for the key to get out of her locked apartment. Morabito insisted they were plumbers come to fix a broken pipe, according to the pensioner's first-hand account at the time, told to Subriado, which you can see some of here. He did not raise his voice, but insisted she give him the key. They unlocked the door, took money from her purse, and used it to pay for a taxi. Officials later learned the prisoners, all awaiting extradition to various countries, had crawled out of a hole on the prison's roof, jumped to a neighboring apartment building, and dropped onto the balcony of the woman's apartment. Some hinky business with prison officials let that all happen. It took two years to find him again. 
When authorities caught up with him this time, he was in northern Brazil. It was May 2021. It was a marquee moment for a new global partnership run by Interpol, the International Criminal Police Organization. It's called ICANN, short for Interpol Cooperation Against the Indrangheta. It coordinates with a dozen countries to track and arrest Indrangheta fugitives. Morabito's 2021 arrest required the cooperation of Italy, Brazil, Uruguay, and the United States. But he wasn't giving up. His extradition was aggressively fought. A Brazil court ordered his extradition, but his defense team launched a vigorous appeal. They even sought political asylum for him. Brazil's top tribunal recently rejected those appeals, but did impose restrictions on how Italy could punish him. His sentence could be no more than 30 years, and the time he spent in prison must also be considered. That cleared the way for this week's flight. The last two years have not been kind to him. He looked a diminished man, thin, frail, gray, bespectacled, unsure of his footing. It could just be the start of the old mobster ploy of becoming seriously ill just before trial, but miraculously recovering once granted mercy by the court. Who knows, but the timing here is interesting. If Morabito hadn't fled back in the 90s, he would be getting out of prison just about now, leaving as a free man. As mafia researcher Anna Sergei notes, it is not just removing Rocco Morabito from South America that matters now. It's about what he has left behind. His kind of work needed more than muscle. It needs specialized support, help from lawyers, businessmen, officials, politicians, Establishing a network of these fixers, brokers and functionaries is a specialty of the Indrangheta, and that network likely remains intact. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe, turn on notifications with the bell icon, and hopefully next time, my voice won't sound so ragged.